There is one thing that psychologists know very well, psychiatrists also know it, of course, and that is that human beings are often resistant to change. Even if the situation you're in is self-destructive or harmful, people in general, that's common people, they prefer what's known what's, and what's, I would say, let's say, I won't say comfortable because much of the world we hold on to isn't comfortable, but worldly people, they tend to hold on to things, even things that are destructive. But it feels familiar onto them. They want to hold on to the familiar. And many folks don't want to admit this about themselves. Some do. But just because they admit it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. A lot of folks just don't want to face any change. But change implies they need to examine themselves. They don't want to do that. So the pagan rulers of this world, they know very well how common people operate. So when a shift is about to happen, the pagan rulers, they themselves will cause some dissatisfaction within the community and they'll leave it at that. Because once the dissatisfaction has been sown, the common people themselves will act on it. And then they will go off at each other. So the visions will come. And once they're deficient and people can't cooperate with one another anymore, the economy is suffering, there's an increase in crime, there's a there are traumatic events in families when all of this chaos is happening, the shift takes place. And once the shift has taken place, then the elites come or the big rulers come with their order. Well, that order was already implemented long time ago. The shift happened, but, it's, but the people were just distracted by their own relief seeking attitude. Their own violence, that means the violence of common people, distracts them seeing what's going on. Now I'll give you an example. Okay. In the 1750s, you had France being dominant in North America besides Spain. Spain was number one in the Americas, the second one was France. But France was for the majority in North America, what they call Canada, uh, the region around the Great Lakes, the Mississippi region, and of course the Louisiana Territory. They were all France, part of New France. But now in North America, Britain was about to become important and Spain's influence was about to increase. But the pagan rulers knew very well that the natives that lived on the Spanish rule might become anxious when more tribes would be included on the Spanish rule. The natives that were under French rule were accustomed to the maltreatment of the French. They were not familiar to the structure of Spanish law. The French that lived in Canada had a privileged position because France invests a lot in Canada. We also had Canada, Acadia, anyway, what do they call the northeast of North America. But now Britain was about to take over. But many of the natives there, um, they integrated in French society. So they didn't want anything to do with the British. And then you had the colonies at the eastern shores of North America where the English lived. Then the British they now would become the focus of attention because now that Britain was increasing its territory in the, in the Americas, in North America at least, it meant that more pressure economically was placed, economic financial was placed on those colonies. So Britain wanted to expand in North America but it lacked the finances. But the colonies, that means Georgia, um, North and South Carolina, you name it, New York, those colonies were prosperous because of their trade with Spain. So now that Spain's influence increased, they would trade more with Spain to hand it over to the United Kingdom. So a shift was about to happen. But it was a shift that the big rulers knew 
the people are not going to take it, neither the natives nor the colonists. So what happened? There were conflicts in the colonies and in Europe. There were conflicts everywhere. The pagan rulers caused the conflicts to escalate. And you had a seven year period of rage on the seas. And these intense years drained the world's population. They wanted it to be over. They wanted international trade to continue as it used to. They wanted to be relieved from all of it. And then came 1763, in which agreement was made that New France would cease to exist. France would only retain a few, two islands in North America. I mean, near um, what near what today call Greenland. Canada and Acadia would be become British. The Louisiana territory would be split in two. The east of Mississippi would become British. Spanish Florida would become British also, and Spain would receive the Louisiana, the rest of Louisiana territory. So Spain's influence and territory increased. So now the shift took place. But the natives and colonists in the Louisiana territory kept speaking French, they resisted speaking Spanish, even though Spanish was the official language now. Many also resisted Spanish law. Now if they would have been told plainly, guys, financially France can't manage nor the, their North their part of North America anymore. So Spain's going to take over. And they would have just said it plainly to the people. The people would have said, ah, we're not going to take that. They won't, won't, we won't take the change. So the Ping rulers intensified the conflicts that were already there. And when things escalated, there was complete chaos, they shifted things. So after things calmed down, the new situation was there. And now the people couldn't resist the new situation because the new situation was there already. So the violence of common people the big rulers used it to distract them from what the big rulers were doing. And this shift was needed to keep the world's economy going. Now, that's an example of the colonial times. Now, the big rulers today do the same thing. The same is happening with Brexit, the same is happening in France now, the same is happening everywhere. There's a shift going on. But the common people are distracted from what's happening, from the shift that's happening. Because the bank rules know very well, if the common people would know the shift that is going on, they will fight against it. So, instead of that, the bank rulers themselves create conflict to drain the people. So now people are fighting, but all that negative energy is spent on superficial conflicts. Conflicts that appear so important, but they really aren't that important. And meanwhile, while the old situation is falling apart, the common people themselves help destroy the old situation that they are so familiar with, while they themselves are destroying the old situation that they want to hold on to, the big rulers shift and push a new situation in. And when the common people are so fed up, they really want things just to, to stop, they find themselves in a new situation. That's how it often goes. Those, that, those are economic resets. And economic resets happen from time to time. World War I, World War II, now, I'm not saying, look, World War I, World War II were rituals, okay? I'm not saying that there were no external actors that influenced it. It's not as if the big rulers are gods. They think they're gods, but they're not. And it's as if they plan every historical event in advance. They can't. They're not the most high. They adapt to what's going on and they make use of what's going on. For example, if there is a situation in which certain black communities suddenly increase in a lot of wealth, then the pink rulers need to adapt to the new situation. They didn't see that coming, but it happened suddenly, so now they need to adapt to that situation. The pink rulers are not in control like the, as the Illuminati, as many of those um, conspiracy theorists are claiming. They need to adapt too. But they prepare themselves ahead of time. They know that in every setting, there's going to be conflict, and there comes a time that, that that situation will expire. So, to prevent that common people get too much say, 
they themselves take the lead. If there's opposition against a situation, they will lead the opposition through controlled opposition. So they're smart. They think ahead. I don't think they're planning everything wisely, but they think ahead. And look, the power now economically is shifting towards Asia. Okay? And this shift implies a decrease in economic relevance for white heritage, if you want to call it that way. And this shift is something the natives of Europe, or say the white natives everywhere, don't want to take. They don't want to accept a decrease of their heritage, which has been dominant for past, I would say, two centuries. They won't hold on to it. But their own heritage has been so polluted by self-destructive ideologies, they themselves destroy their own heritage, but now they don't want to face it. They just want things to continue as normal. They are in denial. The pagan rulers are not in denial. They see clearly that the white heritage is, is destroying itself now. And they see that it's towards Asia that the economic relevance will shift. So now they themselves are helping destroying white heritage completely through mass migration and inconsistent local policies. And while the whites, you can call them that way, are fighting themselves, was really fighting themselves, because they want to hold on to the old situation that's dysfunctional, the Asian actors are preparing themselves. They're marching into Europe, they're settling themselves over there, they're building their economies over there. So within a few years, I don't know how many years, when the power shift has been completed, the Europeans and also the well, I'm saying whites everywhere will find themselves in a new situation. And this new situation is not familiar unto them and they'll need to adapt and may not willingly to adapt. That's why you have those right-wing extremists that come out now. So I just told you what's happening. The pagan rulers of this world, they are smart. They're not gods. They think they're gods, but they're not. They know that they need to prepare for the shifts that are happening. In the Middle Ages, there was also a shift. In that shift, it was more bloody. They starved portions of their population by hiding food supplies. Because at the time, when farmers had their harvest, they stored it in storehouses. And local landlords or local dukes after one thing's restored uh, centrally, the bank rulers starved portions of the population, which led to many corpses. Those corpses uh, led to many diseases. So a big portion of the population died in Europe and also elsewhere in the world. While the, pop the population reduction in Europe was, it was a lot. Some claim around 75%, others say it's only 50%. But that drop of population was needed to keep the world system going. Now, it wasn't needed as if it's, it had to happen. But for the pagan rulers to continue their world system, they needed a reduction in the population of Europe. Why? Because the population in Europe was waking up to the oppressive feudal societies they were growing up into and they wanted to change. But let me say like this, for a change to happen, well, things needed to, uh, to change. And they were not willingly to go through that change. What happened was, was that the Middle Ages slowly came to an end, and now you had the age of discovery for the new world that came, the area of colonialism. Before that, you had the Dark Ages, Though to Islamic invasions, uh, the Europeans were under this constant stress, so their economies decreased. Then you have slowly revival of the economy in Europe and in a feudal setting. But 
that didn't work out that well. So things needed to change. But the pagan rulers didn't want things to change the way the people wanted it. Because the way the people wanted it wouldn't work. Because Europe was not in a very good state at the time. So, by starving a part of the population, a big part of the population, they managed to reduce the amounts of tensions in Europe. And now with the reduced population, they continued. And the reduced population, well, they just wanted to move on. So the children were born afterwards had no memory of how things were before. That's why of the Middle Ages, the, the, the archaeological sources are often scarce. It's that's to cover up the crime that the pagan rulers committed by killing off a large portion of the European population. But that was done. And also in Asia, similar things happened. Because remember, all the world leaders are Apollonists. They all worship the beast. That was done so that a new era of colonialism through Western Europe would emerge. You had Islam being dominant on land, and now the Western countries like Spain, Portugal, and France, England would be dominant on the sea. That was a shift that the big rulers wanted. But to accomplish this, they knew they had to get rid of the resistance. They could either distract the population and enforce a new situation, or they could take action against the population, and they did the last one. In Norway, around 90% of the population died. That's why you have this language crisis in Norway right now. So, why did I record this message? I want you to be aware of what's going on now. I gave you a bigger picture. Um, conspiracy theories often give you portions of what's going on and you get distracted and, you, and you've been drawn into the conflict. I want you out of the conflict. I want you to agree with Christ. I want you, no matter what the setting is, to prosper. So now we know it. Economic power is shifting towards Asia. Am I saying we need to move to Asia? No, just know what's happening. Don't be distracted by what's going on with Brexit, what's going on in France with the Yellow Fest and all of that. Those things are happening, but it's not the bigger picture. The bigger picture is there's a shift happening that many people don't want to see. Because once they see it, they need to accept it. Because shift is happening. And they know that if they resist the shift, they would be further destroying what they're holding on to. So they have so they're in a situation where they don't win. If they accept the shift that's happening, they'll have to put up with a new situation, which is which goes against their interest. If they fight the new situation by holding on to the old, they'll be destroying the old. So in both cases, they lose. And when you have people in a situation when they are cornered with doubt a, a way to win, if they can't win on their terms, because they don't accept reality, they'll freak out. They'll become desperate, they'll attack, they'll do very weird things. And that's what you see now happening in Europe and in the Americas. Those right-wing extremists that commit racist violence on people, they've lost it. Because their relief which is today's white heritage is fading away. And they are acting out like that. So what do you do in times like this? You remain at peace, you know what's going on, and you make sure you remain prosperous. Don't get caught up by what's going on around you. Don't get don't, don't become terrified of what's happening around you. You are concerned for the well-being of the people around you. And the people and people everywhere. That's true. That's biblical but you're not being drawn into the worries of the world. No matter the shift, be prosperous, be at peace.